So I want to welcome you guys to a brand new series here on Jade's Corner titled The Strongest in Teen Wolf, which is going to go over and discuss explicitly only the strongest characters in the world of MTV Teen Wolf. And to base my findings and claims, we're going to be looking at feats, statements, and outside credible influence such as Jeff Davis to a varying extent to justify why these characters are the strongest in the verse. We're going to begin this series discussing one of the most powerful alpha werewolves we've ever seen during the original six season run of the television series, the current generation true alpha, Scott McCall. And I'm going to be telling you in this video why he's even stronger than most of the community gives him credit for. So with that all said, let's begin. To start off, we're going to do a quick rundown of exactly what a true alpha is and the power that comes with the status. Later on in the video, we will discuss the strength of Scott and where he scales based on varying points in the series. Where he was an alpha, for example, season 3, season 4, season 5, you get the point. Because despite popular belief, Scott does get significantly stronger as an alpha over time throughout the series, despite what most of the community would like to have you believe. So what is a true alpha? A true alpha is a beta who can ascend to the status of an alpha through sheer force of will and character rather than taking alpha status through murder or killing somebody. One thing to remember is that true alphas get no special power boost just because they have the added true to their status. You can pretty much consider a true alpha just a normal alpha werewolf who got their power in a non-violent passive way. The only special attribute that's exclusive to true alphas is that their power can only be taken by a beta of their own making. When Scott became a true alpha, you could put his strength alongside other non-augmented alphas like Peter Hale, Derek Hale, at least initially at the time of him achieving his alpha status during the event of Lunar Ellipse. Now, when Scott first became a true alpha, he wasn't anything too special, and you can make the argument that he was weaker than all of the alpha pack, season one Peter, and even Derek Hell to a varying extent. For example, he was afraid of his own power and was scared to tap into his werewolf side just because he wasn't used to the power of being an alpha yet. A prime example of this was when he went to Ethan and Aiden to learn how to control and use his alpha roar so he could revert Malia Tate back from her were coyote form to her human form. Getting abused by the two Omegas and still being afraid to transform because he was still unsure of his new alpha powers yet. We finally see Scott accept his alpha powers for the first time and use them to great effect might I add. When he attempts his first successful alpha roar and manages to revert Malia Tate back into her human form. Now, just because he was finally able to accept his power does not mean that he was necessarily strong as mentioned earlier. We see him get absolutely abused by Japanese demons known as the Oni and even a physically well-built Omega werewolf in Kincaid who tells Scott that he has the eyes of an alpha but not the strength. Now, many people in the community, including the likes of Team Wolf News, and no, this isn't a stab at him, it's just something he misconstrued it, which I'll explain in a sec. Have, take this have taken this statement and have misconstrued it, as I just mentioned, in to some weird fan theories that are completely off base. When the explanation of what Kincaid actually said was a lot simpler than it sounds, it makes complete sense within the confines of the series. Yes, having pack mates increases an alpha overall's power, but to what degree? We can clearly see that even with the amount of pack mates Scott has, which is quite a few in season three, part two, might I add, it didn't amount to much over time, as evident in the fact that he was always needing at least one other person to help him take on someone, minus a few occasions, and we know that werewolves get stronger when they take the spark or essence of another werewolf after killing them. The same can likely be assumed for most other were creatures, but for this, we're only staying on the topic of werewolves. Betas, when they become alphas, take the spark of the alpha they kill, which either adds or multiplies their own strength. It's never stated if the spark provides an addition or if they are just a multiplier, but for this video, we're going to assume that it's a multiplier because when Derek Hell killed his uncle Peter and gained his alpha status and his spark at the end of season one, he was able to go toe to toe with the likes of the Kanima for a period of time and even augmented alpha such as Ennis, for example. When Scott attained his status, he achieved the rank of alpha with a small power boost because he never had to kill to gain his status. He never received a powerful spark from a strong alpha, thus 
him basically being a beta with the eyes of an alpha, technically. Now, this isn't to say that he isn't an alpha because he is, obviously. He's just not as strong as most other alphas in the series at that point in time, and it's probably the weakest if we're being completely honest. Also, his showing against the Nogatsune didn't really help his case in the way of being powerful either, and honestly, Season 3 B Scott was just written to be nothing but a disappointing jobber and a jabroni. Where Scott's growth and power really starts to come in is in Season 4. We see glimpses of him evolving over time as a werewolf and as an alpha as well. His fangs become more beast-like, overpowering things that should have easily killed him in Season 3. And the best example being his epic confrontation with an absurdly strong Omega Peter Hale. We'll cover Peter in a separate video. But during their fight, you could see that Scott was learning how to completely master and use his abilities as an alpha to full effect in that battle. With him being able to dodge blows so quick, he looks like a blur. And being so strong to the point that one uppercut was enough to almost completely take out Peter and pretty much eliminate him as a threat. And one thing that's always bothered me about the power scaling and writing of the characters on the show is that sometimes the powers and strength of characters is inconsistent when the plot needs certain characters to win just to put, push the plot forward. Like if Scott over time grew in power and was this strong by the finale, then why was he struggling against Kate two episodes prior? Now people will come up with the argument that he wasn't fully shifted. I'll provide another example later as to why that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. After a six month time skip in between seasons four and five, we see that Scott had another huge power boost in growth and power and that is first displayed in his fight against Belasco, AKA cheap knockoff Chimera with the Eagle Fang talents that are able to absorb other supernatural creatures powers. This is another fight that many people in the fandom use against Scott, but like Kincaid and the things he said about Scott, people misconstrued the circumstances. If Belasco was able to incapacitate a hellhound Jordan Paris with his claws being the only powerful thing in his arsenal because without them, he's pretty much cannon fodder, he would be in the top five most powerful characters when that's factually not the case. He used the same tactic against Scott that he used against Parrish, and that was pulling up and ambushing him. Something that would bite him in the ass because Scott resulted in literally destroying the bone structure of his forearm forcefully and <laughs> and forcefully with using little strength shoved his bone out of his skin literally as you can see on screen here in the clip. And this clearly shows that Scott got much stronger from the end of season four. And another fight that people love to use against Scott is his infamous duel against his own beta Liam Dunbar in the season five mid season finale. At the end of last year, I dropped a video titled Alpha Scott versus Liam as part of my fantasy fight series where I detailed that entire confrontation and discuss why if Scott was at his full strength and not fatigued from Wolfsbane, why he could have neutralized Liam literally any time he wanted with relative ease. Check it out if you haven't yet. I'll leave a pinned comment in the comment section down below and I'll leave a card right here in the video. There are many more fights in the later half of season five that display the absolute dominance of Scott's ever growing strength as a werewolf, such as when he single handedly took out the entire Chimera pack on his own without shifting, throwing multiple guards off of him at once, and even going up against the Beast of Jebedan and surviving almost every encounter with Sebastian, even commenting on his strength and just how strong Scott actually is, even though he's nowhere near as strong as Valet. In season six, the writing was all over the place, but Scott was also able to go toe to toe with the tribrid Garrett Douglas, who had the powers, of course, of a Loa Minch and the Wild Hunt, and the strength of an Alpha as well as a Dread Doctor. Based on previous showings in the series, Scott should have got absolutely dominated in that fight, as it's shown in the same season that some of the stuff that Douglas was able to do even prior to becoming a tribrid, Scott was absolutely struggling with and even needed help from his other pack members, such as fighting off even one member of the Wild Hunt and holding a Hellhound at bay, needing help from Theo and Liam to do so, and needing help from Liam and Malia to fight Ghost Riders on numerous occasions shown throughout the same season. And let's not forget that Deucalion, before he died, taught Scott how to fight enemies while being blind, while he wasn't necessarily nearly as experienced as Deucalion fighting this way. It should still be noted that McCall is still a dangerous threat, even if blinded, such as in his fight against the Anukate. When we see him again in Teen Wolf the movie this year, it should be very interesting to see just how strong he's gotten over the years since his last canonical appearance in 2015 during the events of the global war against Tamora Monroe and her army of hunters. Scott McCall is not weak, despite what the series would like to display in certain encounters. He's absurdly strong for a werewolf with just a single spark. And when Sebastian 
Valet, arguably the most powerful and most dominant force in the entire series, compliments you and gives you props for being really strong, you know you're doing something right with your power. Now, I want to thank you guys for tuning into this video. If you guys enjoyed what I had to say today, make sure you guys leave a like. It helps this video get out to more Team Wolf fans. We are trying to get the 50K by the end of the year, but we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers right now. It's going to be a big 2022. And with that all said, I'm Jade Corner. Make sure you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you guys subscribe once again. And when you do, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a future upload from me. I will catch you guys in the next strongest in Team Wolf videos, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.